Hi everyone, this is um, Equipping Heaven Dwellers. It's the 19th of June. Go ahead, Kath. Okay, I just want to remind everybody that it's your journey. It, you know, your journey into, um, into the kingdom of God. And I loved what Graham Cook said, uh, that um, don't let anything stop you on your journey into the nature and character of, of your Father, your Creator God. And so just keep at it. No matter what obstacles you might come against or what difficulties you have, um, somebody's gone before you and can help you or there's a way. Uh, one of my favorite prayers is make a way where there is no way, Lord, you know, and, and he does. Uh, so if your desire, he gives us the desires of our heart, Psalm, 20, Psalm 37. So uh, if we desire to know him more intimately, I call it a deeper, the deeper walk or whatever, but um, it's your journey and uh, start where you are because God meets you where you are. And we we're you know, you guys are some new faces to us. And in the last three or so months, we've been laying a foundation. I've, I felt like uh, there was like at least six things that I, I, I think all you guys are, are not newbies, but there might some be somebody that comes on to listen that will be, you know, brand new and, and not have been on the journey much. So that's why I'm saying this for us because um, we've, we've been laying a foundation the last six, three months or so, three or four months. And I feel like there's about six things that it's really helpful to understand and have as a foundation before you can really move into ruling and reigning with Yeshua. So uh, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't thought about those things, if you haven't um, embraced those things or gotten teaching on them, then I'd encourage you to go back. You can scroll back on the chat group and, and listen to those in, in your own time. Listen to those. And if you need more information on something, you can ask one of us. Or there's lots of information. There's other places for information. Sometimes when I was uh, trying to get my head around a concept like the courts, I had to go to two or three different teachers because one person would say it one way and another person would say it another way and finally somebody would say it some way when I could catch it or, you know, put all the puzzle pieces together and it's like, oh, that's what that means. So be sure and get the teaching you need, you know, wherever you're at. And so don't, don't, don't be confused. Don't, don't leave it off. Um, get get the foundation you need. So um, because because that is important. It's like you know it's like anything humans do. You have to learn the alphabet before you can write an essay. And we've been uh, establishing. We've been putting the alphabet together in the last few months, and we're about at the point where we're ready to write an essay. So you know if you're jumping into the middle of it, it it might be you know under under hard to understand. I love listening to Ian Clayton because he gives me vision about where I can go, but I have to come back and go, okay, this is where I'm at and I have to deal with this. I have to, you know, go through step by step and, and deal with my own stuff so that I'm actually really doing it and not just pretending like I'm doing it. So anyway, that's my, that's my spiel. <laughs> I'm done. Thanks, Kat. That's totally, um, so I'm so glad that you reminded everyone about that. It's, it's always been the case with Ian that he said, get your own stuff. Whenever he would share, he would say, get your own stuff. And he would say, don't just take what I say, you know, go find out for yourself. And also, you know, with Mike, when he put up all, he just put up to such a lot of resource, Mike Parsons with um, um, Freedom Arc, he put up so much resource. And then he said, look, he said, don't, don't pretend. This is not about getting a whole lot of information to say, well, I, I can now, you know, quote it and I've now got an A. It needs to be a reality. So however and how, however you flow through it, whatever you take to heart at that time, you, you go with the flow of the spirit with you so that it becomes a reality. And however long it takes for that to be a reality for you, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thanks so much for that, Kat. That's so there is a reminder. reason... There is a reason that there's a spirit of knowledge and a spirit of understanding and a spirit of wisdom. And they do all work together and they all have different functions. And we do need knowledge, but we also need wisdom to express it and we need understanding to, to be able to really put it out there. So, um, yeah, so there, there's a reason for all of them, but they kind of all mesh together so that you're not doing it so you're, you're, you're sharing the kingdom out of humility. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Um, so Kathy and I are going to uh, tag team a little bit as well um, as we go along. But Arabella, so I just want to say that we're in our third session of what we call mandates and blueprints because we ended up, as we engaged with God on it, we ended up seeing that we needed to start somewhere different. And um, Arabella is going to just give us a nice recap on what we've done over the first two um, sessions and, and um, then we'll go further from there. Thanks, Arabella. Yeah, thank you all for joining in. So let me, I'm gonna pull something up for everyone. Can everyone see that? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Wonderful. Okay, great. So we thought, I just thought it'd be good to have a little bit of a uh, picture, picture view. Um, this is not an exhaustive list. It's just a brief recap on where we're going and uh, how Father God is bringing it to full circle now. So our first week in sharing and teaching about mandates and blueprints, Father God led us into rest, which of course is an intimacy with him. And so just a couple uh, phrases from different scriptures and so on. Uh, I'll read a few of them for you. Uh, Cease from your own works. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Be still and know that I am God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And our work is to believe in him. And that's really where it begins. What we found is the way that he led us, it all really begins in intimacy and really is not meant to be done outside of intimacy. Um, our week two, uh, Father had us hone in on the relationships that we have. Here's just an example. Uh, we have our relationship with first and foremost, the Godhead, um, Lady Wisdom the seven spirits of God, which have really been manifesting a lot lately on various encounters. So they're very, very vital. Um, there are tutors and mentors um, and they assist us. We have the angels that help in so many different ways, um, ministering to us, warring for us, removing stumbling blocks. We have the men in white linen, the great cloud of witnesses, the ever living ones, and the sons on the earth, our fellow sons here on the earth, just all of us meeting today. And um, I just wanna touch, and so today we're gonna focus a little bit more on uh, responsibility and authority, but also where they all work together. So in responsibility and authority, we're really growing in our true identity as sons, remembering who we are and not losing sight of who we are. Um, this is a time where we understand and receive our scrolls, our mountains, our mandates and blueprints. And of course, we have so much to help us. We have the relationships and we have uh, weapons and resources to assist us in landing our scrolls. Um, but now if we move back over to intimacy where it really all began, this is where our heart to heart connection is established with God. This is also where we first agreed with him on our scrolls. Um, this is a place where uh, we get to be real with God, no matter where we're at, uh, a happy place, a sad place, discouragement, uh, you know, woundedness, it doesn't matter, we need to be real with God. Um, and he loves that. I've learned he, he really does love that, it doesn't matter we don't have to perform. We don't have to be at our very best. It's a time to get real. And in that place of realness, our desires are revealed and reawakened, which have so much to do with our scroll. And also this is where blocks anything that's been hindering us along our journey in relationship, in rest, um, in our other relationships and responsibility and authority. This is where the blocks also get dealt with. 
And what we're finding is this is meant to be as we uh, emerge as manifest sons, this cycle where we've kind of focused on different areas and honed in on the areas that God um, wants to show us, it's meant to be a bit of a seamless cycle as we manifest as sons, where we do it all out of the intimacy. So that's what I have. I know Michelle's going to go a little deeper on some things, so I'll turn it over to you, Michelle. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, sorry, Arabella. <laughs> Let me just put my, there we go. There we go, thanks. That was a, a very good um, review. And we, as um, Arabella said, we're just going to come to this place now where we're gonna take a look at mountain scrolls, mandates and blueprints. It was really about mandates and blueprints, but we realized that the scrolls and the mountains are a part of all of that. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to say just, <clears throat> we first of all want to recognize that we have relocated from the earth into citizenship in heaven. So now we are doing everything as citizens of heaven, in heaven and from heaven into the earth. So that's the first thing to establish there. When it comes to the next thing that um, Arabella mentioned about receiving our scroll, our scroll is really what is written about us in our spirit. It's what we agreed with Papa on before we came into our mother's womb as a spirit being. It's, it's, it's held in our spirit. And when we are awakened and joined with Holy Spirit through believing Jesus, that scroll begins, Holy Spirit begins to unveil that scroll to us. And what it shows as is desires begin to develop. And so we begin to be aware of these deep desires. And out of those desires, we begin to see that we have mountains. Now, a mountain simply means that we then have a place of authority based on those desires. So the Lord didn't just give us those desires in our spirit, but also gave us the authority to carry out those, des those desires. So, and, and let me just say this, I'm talking about what's written in the scroll of our, of, of our spirit, of the scroll of our spirit, but there can be many scrolls, which are little books of revelation, um, or insights or understandings, many scrolls that we might be given along the way. But I'm just talking about the particular agreement that we made with Father about what our spirit is to carry out. And in that, we then discover that, as I said, we have authority to carry out those things. Now, when we talk about a mountain, we're talking about sitting in a place of authority in heaven. So then when we're talking about sitting in a place of authority in heaven, we're talking about not carrying out or trying to redeem an old mountain when people talked about, you know, the seven mind-molding mountains, such as um, media, uh, business, education, family. We're not talking about that. The, the scroll that we get doesn't, doesn't describe that because that actually is rooted in serpent seed. It, it, you know, um, those mind molders, we're not going to redeem those old mountains. The mountains that we get um, authority on, often they may flow into those areas of life, but often um, they have, you have to get your own mountain and you'll get it from your scroll, from the desires in your, in, in your spirit. And so, I'll tell you, like, for example, one of my mountains is freedom. Okay, so you get your own scroll based out of the desires that you begin to recognize that are being shown to you that are in your spirit. And then you begin to have a place where you can now rule and begin to carry out that which is there in your heart. And, of course, you can take place in many different ways. And I want to say that it's malleable. 
And what I mean by that is that your scroll is not fixed. It's not like, oh, this is what you've got to do, point one, point two, point three. It's not like that at all. Um, it's malleable. In other words, it, it, it forms as you walk with God. It, it can move and it can take different shapes and, and so on. And so that's what we mean by malleable because it comes again out of intimacy, out of relationship that it builds and it grows. And so out of un some understanding there, we then move into what we call mandates and blueprints. So a mandate is simply the authority to carry out something. And a blueprint is the detailed map or description of something that you get. So you could get many blueprints and many mandates that would be a part of your mountains, all right? So you could have the mountain of freedom and then on that basis, you will get different mandates. Perhaps your mandate would be to help release somebody in people in the area of deliverance. And, and that would be the, the freedom that you're called to. It may be to bring a, a teachings that would bring release of freedom. So I'm just saying that it will show itself in various ways, but there'll be many mandates and many blueprints that you will get. So as I said, a mandate is the authority to carry out a blueprint and the blueprint is the detailed design or roadmap that you get. So when you get um, a blueprint and a mandate, <clears throat> then the next step along the way would be to find out, and then we're not going to cover this today, but it would be to find out how to engage together with others to actually carry out that, that blueprint and with the mandate. Now, there's two things important here. Last week, we talked about how we were family, and God showed us that our family in heaven consists of the seven spirits, wisdom, her handmaidens, the men in white linen, cloud of witnesses, those that are ever-living ones, angels, and so on. And, and also Jesus, because Jesus can, can be a part of a bench with us. And I'm, I'm just use that word right now. But we will do, deal with that in a future time. But we have the resources of relationships to carry out those blueprints. And... So you would get this blueprint. It would be um, out of desire. It begins to develop into a framework. Um, out of desire to share what's been given to us, we have, the, and out of the conviction from Holy Spirit that now's the time to do it, we have seen a blueprint of what we call equipping heaven dwellers. And we have laid it out in a brief way or in an overall way and we are carrying it out on a on a bi-week bi-monthly basis now we're carrying it out um, and engaging every time before we meet on that particular time to to continue in the intimacy and to continue in the flow from heaven of how to go about the next say meeting time and so that is how you would carry out a blueprint now one thing to mention and understand is that there are blueprints and mandates that you would get that will be only carried out in heaven. And there will be blueprints and mandates that you would carry out in the earth. Because in the image of sonship that we are in lion, ox, eagle, man, or in the image of the apostolic, the prophetic, and the um, priest and the king, we we function differently. Um, in the priestly function, we function in heaven. In the kingly function, we function in heaven. In the apostolic and the prophetic, or the legislative and the and the and the um, the voice or the um, carry out your voice <laughs> oracle. <laughs> um, those are those are carried out more in the earth. So. For example, you may get a mandate and a blueprint to um, 
with a, with a heart desire for a nation or for nations or for a particular um, cause or something like that, that you would be carrying that out in heaven. You may be led to be part of the chancellorship in heaven or be part of the fathers in heaven or, and, and therefore learn to engage in that way in heaven and heaven's decisions and so on. So those things would have an impact in the earth, but they wouldn't be being carried out in the earth. They would, your part would be being carried out in heaven. You may carry out things in heaven that others will then carry out on earth. And so this is where you might engage with the, the chancellor's houses, which we, can, we will cover at another time. But I'm just trying to help you see that we're now living as citizens of heaven and things are different there. And so to add to that, I want to say that <clears throat> what you've been doing, where you're at right now, what you are doing, you may want to bring that into heaven. You may want, because we have relocated, we have been relocated out of the kingdom and darkness and into the kingdom of light. We've been relocated into heaven. We're now citizens there. So you may want to bring, if you haven't done this before, you may want to bring what you're doing into heaven and let the fire of God burn on it and remove all the wood, hay and stubble that might be there and produce the gold, silver and precious stones and establish it so that it can then have heaven involvement and begin to operate from heaven into the earth. Now, when I started the, the page Company of Heaven Dwellers, it came out of desire and it, it came as a blueprint. And, but, but what happened was, I, and I'm, so I set it up, I just you know op opened up a group. And there came a stage in which I realized, you know, I really need to have this uh, established in heaven. So I took company of heaven dwellers into heaven and I said, look, you know, who, which angels want to be a part of this? You know, who, who are the cloud of witnesses would like to invest in? And, you know, it took off after that, just suddenly just took off all kinds, just all of a sudden there were a lot of people that wanted to join company of heaven dwellers. And so I say that because I feel like it's important that we completely relocate our whole self, everything about us, into heaven because there's where we live and there's where all the resources are. Something else I want to mention is that when we, when we recognize that we family with the cloud of witnesses and, we, and the men in white linen, the ever-living ones, then we realize that we are the ecclesia in heaven and on earth and we can have relationship with them and they would want relationship with us based on the different blueprints and mandates because they have blueprints and mandates and scrolls that never end. It's a never-ending cycle or continue on, you know. And they're very keen to help us, but they also might like us to help them. I'll share briefly that I had an encounter with someone from the cloud of witnesses that I hadn't met before, that this, this person engaged with me, and <clears throat> it was someone who was part of my earthly, my, uh, my bloodline but I hadn't known them because it goes way back. And um, I, so I was, I had never experienced this before, but I realized that there was something that because I was part of that generational line that was request, a request for me to carry out in the earth. And as a result of that, um, I was able to stand here and in the earth and, and, and go into a court case and speak out and, I was able to take a place of repentance on behalf of the generational line for something. There were two people um, in the cloud of witnesses that are that wanted me to just to release something in the earth that they never accomplished. That and and it was important to them because I carry as one of my one of my um, mountains unity union and especially unity in the ecclesia. And what happened was in my bloodline, there was a war, a literal war between my bloodline, two of my people in my bloodline against each other, where they killed each other because of their religious beliefs. And both of them were in, in heaven 
and wanted me to to do something in the earth that they never did. They never s- stayed in the earth and said, wow, we repent for where we've judged you and, and criticized you and so condemned you that we actually wanted to kill you. And so I received the mandate. I saw the blueprint and I carried it out on their behalf. So there's a lot that goes on with receiving you know, mandates and blueprints. And it all comes out of, as I said, relationship. I didn't go looking for this. <laughs> it went just, it just, I just exper- experienced it. So something else that's important that as we do start to take responsibility, it comes out of, again, not looking to take responsibility, but coming into intimacy and just growing in that place of intimacy. And we will find ourselves experiencing these different things. We will find ourselves in these encounters and we will find ourselves in these places in heaven or with these people, or with these angels. And um, because we are and have agreed and just said, yes, I am a son and I do take responsibility and I do want to grow. So I'm open. And then we have a testimony afterwards. We don't get it all in a book and then, you know, try and carry it up. That's not how it works. So I would like to know if, Kathy, if you want to add anything to that. Um, yeah, I, you actually, yeah, covered it really well. But I, I would just say that um, earlier um, in like the first month or so that we were meeting and doing these videos, we covered that biblical basis for where we're seated and how we're seated, um, giving a whole bunch of scriptures actually about how we are seated and where we're seated and all that in heavenly places. For anyone who's new and and really wants to see a scriptural basis for that, we um, we covered it quite extensively earlier, so that would be really good for you to go see if that's a question for you had. And then I I think you said this, Michelle, but yeah, the cloud of witnesses, um, I think a lot of them, their mandates didn't get completed in the earth. Um, And so they're looking for people that are willing to um, complete their mandate. And so if your mandate kind of lines up with theirs, because I think that God often, um, you know, have a similar mandate, you know, similar kind of things or or maybe it's a region or a sphere of authority of somehow you know he's looking that cloud of witnesses are looking for someone to complete their their mandate and so that's something we can be open to as we're in engaging in heavenly places great thanks kath um does anyone have a question anyone among you that if you have a question that you may want to just unmute and, and ask your question or a comment? Michelle, if I can just, th- thanks for that clarity, that helps a lot. Um, just in terms of a blueprint, in terms of expectations, what to look and, and all that type of stuff. Um, could you just give an idea? Obviously, as you said, you know, it will be unique, but I mean, is there any idea? Of, I mean, is it literally a blue piece of paper, you know, a, a blue technical drawing blueprint? You know what I mean? I mean, just to define the terminology, um, do you have a better idea of what is meant by it? Um, <clears throat> you know, again, um, because we are mystics, and let's just say yes, yes, we are mystics because we are. You know, we are we are mystics. That's who we we are. We we, we forgot about it, but we're <laughs> um, um, Frederick. To answer that, it it happens so differently. What what what? starts it off is recognizing the desire and then saying yes to it, you know, agreeing with that desire. Then once you agree with that desire, things start to open up. In other words, like um, I actually got this, this desire to do the equipping heaven dwellers. And i and the Lord said to me, you're ready, you know, you need to do this. And I said, yes, Lord, but then I need, but then I need to, to, to see how to put it together. And, and out of that desire, I just sat down and it began to come to me a framework that I then posted onto Company of Heaven Dwellers and said, who would like to to join it? So that's how I got it. But then um, as we engage, if, if, for example, it can happen differently 
where, um, for example, where two or three of you would come together, like, for example, let's just take, let's move on with this. So then I said, all right, Lord, um, thanks. Now, I obviously need a bench. I have you, Jesus. And you can start something with Jesus because Jesus will be the bench person for you all. We're going to talk more about bench, but you probably all have a bit of an idea on that anyway. But I, I, I felt like government is needed because we understand that government in heaven needs to be on earth. So I'm looking for those that have that same type of desire. And I'm asking the Lord for that. And it so happens that the Lord just shows and Kathy and Arabella really resonate and that's it. So we form. So what we do then is we, 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 we then go and we say, all right, now we, re we receive the anointing and the authority together. I didn't carry this out by myself because I'm looking for those to do it with me. And so we received that together. And then what happened was we, we then engage to see. And we got, we saw ourselves on white horses with Jesus. We, we, so a blueprint was opening up for us together as a group because we engaged together over it. And so you might get a weapon, you might get, you know, in, in engaging together, you can get all different kinds of things. Someone from the card of witnesses might come. You might meet an angel that's, that you would understand this angel is part of this purpose. So to try and put it into, um, I'm just trying to say the blueprints emerge. You can have a practical blueprint, if I can put it that way. The practical blueprint I got was what I invited you all to, where I wrote it on Company of Heaven Dwellers. But the actual outworking of it has brought us into blueprint where we now have John on the bench with us as well. And that's a, an amazing thing. So uh, we're mystics and uh, it, the, things can happen in various ways. So we never want to try and put it into too much of a, you know, I don't know if that's helping, Frederick. Does it, Kathy it, have it something? Does. It, it, it does. Because again, at least now I know not to necessarily look for a document to be floating around somewhere. Uh, <laughs> right. <better>. Right. <laughs> Yeah, the blueprint is really an, an, an opening up of the desire. Because once you say yes to that desire, then the blueprint is it, it's like, okay, well, now what is this all about? Then, then that just kind of like opens up the desire into how it's going to, how it's going to come together. You first have to have the desire, recognize the desire, agree with the desire, and then and say yes to it, and then it, it kind of opens up. Okay. You know, I mean, the desire I had was some. I wasn't. You see, because this is there for again. We can't really put too much practical to it because I I wasn't looking for a connection with um, someone in my actually. To be honest, that's not true. I was looking for to understand those in my bloodline because we were we were really repenting on behalf of Freemasonry, which I recognized was in my bloodline a lot. And so I was looking for it, but I, I decided not to try and look in an ordinary way, you know, try and do Ancestry.com or anything like that. And so there was a desire there, but the way it happened wasn't was unusual that I met someone from the cloud of witnesses and I typed that name in on the computer and the whole of the clan from the beginning opened up to me just there. And as I looked through it and I saw the person, the name of that person, I saw what was going on at that time in history. I, and my eyes were open and I could see this is what this is all about. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of an adventure, <laughs> you know, you don't necessarily know, but all I can say is that when you say yes to desire, I guess blueprint then opens up. Kathy, do you have something? So I want to add that um, mystics, um, I think that word has gotten a bad right. Sorry, Kathy, you went, you muted. Um, whoops, sorry. Let's see. What, I, what did I say? Um, yeah, I, d I think uh, the word mystic has gotten a bad rap. Um, at least in my world, it kind of, uh, you know, is supposed to be something out of darkness. But 
But myst mystic, I came to realize recently, is is just um, a mystic is someone who looks into the mysteries, and we're told to look in, into the mysteries. We're told that the kings uh, reveal the mysteries, and so um, so that was really comforting to me because when I was a uh, youth, we lived on something called the Mystic Route in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and there's nobody mystic in my family at all. I'm the most mystical person of any. It's like, but we've kept that, you know, that word has followed us. So it's been mystic saddle ranch and mystic route and mystic this. And then I'm like, they don't even have a clue what it means. You know? So I was like mystic. I mean, you know, it's had such a bad meaning anyway. Um, so I just love that, that we're looking into the mysteries of God. We're just looking into the mysteries and we're bringing, um, bringing that that light out of the depths of God in, into into the darkness in this world. That I mean, that's really what we're doing. So I just love that. Um, and Michelle and I have a very different way of explaining uh, any of all of these concepts. So I can tell. I don't know how to say your name, Hannah Rita. Hannah. Uh, Frederick. Oh, it was Frederick. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, Fred is Fred is good. Nielsen or something that was asking those questions. Anyway, um, it sounds like your engineering Greek mindset is is uh, looking for <laughs> guilty uh, physical things. So I look at it this way. I kind of look at it in my Greek mindset because it helps me. So uh, you know, I see that as we as we come in. Well, we're born with uh, we come with with a scroll, and on that scroll is like our our purpose and our destiny and and then as we as we get as the scroll gets released into the earth realm like and we have to you know get off we have to kind of deny ourselves and and get outside of our families the all the stuff our family puts on us and all the stuff our society puts on us we have to come out outside of that and as that scroll gets released then out of that scroll it will come our desires and and our um our, our heart starts showing up, you know, and so out of that, uh, it is our, our mountains or our spheres of authority. And, and out of our mountains then comes our mandates and the, and the mandate is like, okay, you know, like, like this, uh, webs, this, um, call is, is a mandate. It's a mandate to, to, uh, to teach the sons, to teach other sons, to teach other, uh, hungry hearts for deeper things in God, how to be sons and, and how to grow up into what we're all designed and created to do and be. And so that, that's the mandate. And, and, and we have a desire for that. So then the blueprint is like the details and, and God brings in the details and the resources. It brings in the details and the resources. And we kind of keep going back to that blueprint, but we keep going back to the mandate too. And they kind of interact, you know, and it's kind of fluid because it's spiritual after all, it's, it's not physical, you know, even though some of these things are manifested in the physical for sure, but, but they're definitely, you know, fluid and they, they kind of go back and forth. And so some people look at, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> excuse me, I see kind of an order like that, that the blueprint is the last thing you get, but then out of that blueprint can come mandates to, to do various actions. And then out of that will, will come, uh, out of that mandate, that desire will come a blueprint to to do that, which is the details about how to actually, you know, make it make it happen in the earth realm. So, anyway, that that's how I would kind of describe it in a nutshell. Thank you. That that answers all of my questions. Thank you. <laughs> You're blessed. <laughs> you know, Anyone else have a question or comment? You know, it's so interesting that you guys are doing this because um, at the last. Um, at the last um, Sons Arise conference that Mike Parsons was doing in Devon, um, he finished by doing a ketuba for everyone, which is sort of like, um, yeah, the whole mandates and blueprints. So um, I've got my ketuba of um, outrageous things that I've always wanted to do in God, you know, which is basically becoming that manifest son of God, you know, doing outrageous supernatural things but also just revealing god's greater glory which is his passion and design for all of us so yeah i really want to be a part of this this sounds fantastic it sounds really good 
Thanks, Adi. That's wonderful. Really good. I love what you said there. Yeah. So um, any, any other questions or comments? Yeah, uh, Hanisha hi, here. Uh, good evening, everybody. I just have one question. What is um, ever living ones? What's the difference between uh, ever living ones and the cloud of witnesses? Thank you. Um, ever living ones are those Hanitra who have their bodies that never died that are such as Enoch, Elijah, Moses went and got his body back. But I believe that also those, uh, yeah, so uh, they never died, either they never died or uh, they did die, but when Jesus died, they were resurrected and they came out of the tombs, remember, and they went into Jerusalem and um, we never hear about them anymore. <laughs> so my, my understanding is that they they went up with Jesus or went up, you know, um, as as sons into heaven. And yet, my understanding is that when they were resurrected, they had their everlasting immortal bodies, as Jesus does. And so, um, ever living ones, when uh, this is what I understand is that, and I understand that from Ian, that ever living ones are those who can also. Um, function in the earth because one cannot function in the earth if you do not have a physical body. So the cloud of witnesses are those that are in heaven, but they left their physical bodies on the earth. And so they cannot come here. We can engage with them in heaven, but they cannot come here. But those who have their bodies, such as Enoch and others, can actually appear here, like Jesus can actually appear here. Now, that is just my understanding of that. I don't yeah. remember what, uh, what was your other question? Uh, yeah, I think you answered. <laughs> okay. I, think, I think it's clear. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I want to add to that, that I, don't, I, I, I guess I'm feeling bold enough to do this. Um, there's quite a few of us these days, sons that have been, uh, you know, on, on this path, this deeper walk that are, um, feeling challenged to believe that for ourselves. I know uh, God gave me that promise um, some years ago now. <laughs> and and um, every now and again I say it, and of course nobody believes me, but, but Michelle may, <laughs> maybe. But, um, but, but God's giving us that. I mean, there's that promise, isn't it, is Isaiah, that, um, that we will, our youth will be renewed like the eagles? Yeah. And, and uh, God gave me that as a, as a, he gave me that as a, a promise some years ago. And so I'm hanging on to that. Um, I think it's a, a growth and maturity thing to some degree, but, but, um, but I think that there, it's not, uh, it, it's available to us. I love what Justin Abraham says. I mean, he said, he says that the more time he spends with God and, and in the heavenly places and understands it, his death is like, it, death makes no sense to him death just makes no sense so so god is about life and and um whenever i'm talking to my family about funerals and graves and like we did memorial day recently i'm like i'm not engaging death i'm engaging life i'm not going there i'm not going to need one of those things you know? cool. <laughs> they yeah. think i'm crazy <laughs> yeah. but, okay because if you're gonna believe for something why not make it impossible you know <laughs> yeah, Big. yeah. I so agree with that because do you know something, Kathy? This is exactly what the Lord has been touching on my heart as well. Awesome, awesome. Woo. When we start to when we start to embrace, you know, the reality of the fact that we were crucified with Christ and we were resurrected with him, we have no business engaging with death. Amen. Yeah, and we have to catch ourselves because it's such a habit. Exactly. It's about it now. It should be about immortality now, growing into that. Definitely. Because we are a new creation. And, you know, it doesn't matter if people think that, you know, I'm nuts or, you know, you're nuts or whoever or so, you know, but that's the truth. <laughs> so we've got to go into that. Definitely. Immortality starting now. Now. Yeah. Definitely. Now. You bet. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, 
if, if you feel like you have been given that uh, that vision, it's kind of a vision. If you feel like you've been given that vision or one of those the scriptures that promised that, then hang on to it. You know, so I'm going to even if it. What, what have I got to lose? You know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, bless, bless you all. It's been fantastic. Um, I've got to go now, unfortunately. But um, I watched the replay as well, though. But yeah, it, it, this has inspired me so much. It really has. Awesome, Adi. You Bless you. Bless you, Adi. Good. Good. I just uh, pray that all of you get um, entangled up more with God, yeah, with Yahweh. Yes. 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 Amen. Just ask God to make a way where there is no way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Amen. Bless you all, Frederick. Bless you. Bye, Adi. All right, then. Bye. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, yes, um, this is so interesting to say. We are in God, and God is in us, right? So immortality is in us, and we are in immortality because God is, immortal, God is immortal. So we're in him, we're in immortality, and if he's in us, immortality is in us. So we are definitely contending for that reality. Okay. Well, that and corruption, incorruption. I mean, we're in corruption as well. I mean, that's, that, that's a huge concept to be in incorruption. And Absolutely. And the, uh, in corruption, overcome the corruption that's in us. You know, whatever. Yes. Any more questions? Yeah, maybe I will. I have to add a little bit about that. I so agree with that uh, immortality and uh, and against death. I agree totally with Kathy and Adi, because uh, uh, so far as I remember. I always believe in what I, I am immortal. And then when I became Christian, like you, even a, a, a old wine skin, I, I, I still believed in that. I, I was, I had that in my spirit. And I never went to funeral or something. <laughs> and then la later, all my family also accept Jesus and the entire family stopped to go to funeral. We, we didn't believe in that anymore. Which, which was creating a lot of fighting with other members, like we are, how can we be so unsocial and so and so. But then later, like before I, I could cry, I could say out that this is not reality, this is not from God. Then I was quiet because it was so much people in that uh, fashion until lately my faith is strong back again. So I'm so happy you say that, guys. Because I agree totally, we are immortal. No death. Amen. Thank you, Hanicha. Well, let's engage. We thought we would um, go in and engage together. Um, we can just meet in a place, just be uh, come into a place of intimacy um, with Yeshua, with um, Father, wherever you would feel to go. We just go into a place of intimacy. And then we'll just engage for um, what you would be led to, whether it's to look at your scroll or whether it's to something to do with the mandate or a blueprint or even maybe bringing things into heaven that you felt like you needed to do. Maybe look around and see what you know your, your mountain looks like. Or Let's just do that. We will just give a little time for everyone to engage. And then if you like, um, and want to, you can share anything that you, you received. So I'm going to put my video off right now. So as we just open up our hearts and just come in to this intimacy of the intimate friendship that we now have with Yeshua, with Daddy, with the Holy Spirit. Let's just come together. Let's just join together, join our hands together and step in. We see ourselves stepped into heaven. Although we live here, we're just going to take it as an activation that we're stepping in together, holding hands. And we're just going to come to this place now where we're going to embrace Jesus, Yeshua. Let's just embrace Yeshua and, and then let's just um, engage quietly with him about scrolls, mountains, mandates and so on.
whatever. We're just opening our hearts to receive and um, engage together with him.
Does anybody have anything that they are willing to share that they've seen or, or heard or engaged? I don't know if it's only for me or for us together, but I have strong um, sense, like uh, ha need to engage uh, the spirit of might, the, the blue. Yesterday we have been in a session with a group, and uh, and the first time uh, for me at, at least that uh, we have been engaging the spirit of might. And all night and all morning, it doesn't uh, quit my spirit. And even now, it's strongly. So uh, I have to share that. And uh, the sense, especially, was to unfetter with something that, for us, had not allowed the spirit of mind to, to tutor us for real. That that he. That the spirit of might can manifest for real in our lives and through us. So whatever it is, like a stronghold, old wine skin, thinking and fashion, uh, belief in everything, something we have been inherited, education and tradition, everything that we may think we are not worthy, we are weak, and, and something like that. That that I have right now. So. I just want to put that there. Thank you. Thank you, Hanitra. That's very encouraging. Yes, we receive the spirit of might. We honor you, spirit of might. We receive your function to us. That goes along um, with what I was seeing. Uh, this was a bit of surprise, a bit of a surprise for me. I um, I saw my book like come towards me, and it completely, like my it went around my head. It just closed up, like went completely around my head. And the sense I got was that I was being baptized with my book or my scroll without even necessarily knowing what was in it entirely. And so it was almost like encapsulating my head. So again, I'm thinking government too. And then um, after that happened, then I started to see something that in my life that's been a little bit on the back burner. And I saw it written in the book, just one word. And then I, this is where I, start thinking about other things that I felt called to and, and kind of like what Michelle was saying about having it 
brought into heaven. So I saw some other things that I was doing that I saw affirmation, affirmation, and then one thing I wasn't sure of. And the one thing I wasn't sure about, he um, re, uh, uh, there was like a reset to it. He gave me like a basic understanding of how that could be done in a, in a better way, in a right way. Um, but then going along with Hanitra, I actually saw, um, it looks like one of those little games. Like I saw around my neck, a circle, uh, of something you spin. Like when you play a game and you hit the little spinner and it was the seven spirits of God around my neck, like a necklace. And they were spinning quite fast. And I realized that whatever I needed, um, would come to me. Um, when I needed it from all of them, they were all there, but like whatever needed to be highlighted or focused for help was there. And then I was like, I drew it out and I was like, oh my goodness, this looks like something a court jester would wear, you know, cause it's these little flaps all around the neck. And then I heard they're entertaining as well. Like when we land our scroll, they equip us to be the dynamic people that we are, that draws people into God and who they are and who God is in them and who they are in God. Um, so basically they're accessible whenever. And then when I was experiencing all this, then I just felt um, a calling to the, um, the armor of God. And so I started to see the sword of the spirit and the helmet salvation and the breastplate of righteousness. And that just started um, coming back on to me in a new way. Thank you, Arabella. That's lovely. Wonderful. So we all receive that reality that the seven spirits are so committed to tutor us and so committed to be part of everything that's in our scroll. We just embrace them, honor them, love them, Anyone else have something to share? All right, well, I just want to encourage us all to take into our heart, into the garden of our heart, what we have um, encountered and experienced today. And just with gratitude, we just thank you so much, Holy Spirit, Yeshua and Father, for being part of your family, for being belonging to you and being taught and shown how we are growing in knowing and walking with you and loving you and we receive everything that's been shown to us today we take it into our garden of our hearts and plant it there we thank you that it's going to be well watered and we're progressing together and we're so grateful for everything that you've shown us everything that we have gained everything that we have grown in all the revelations we so are grateful for realizing who we really are and just the beginning of realizing who we really are. And we so enjoy this. And we are so excited about the journey. We, just, we thank you so much for this time. Just come out of that engagement together. And I'll be going to put the recording off.